Hey y'all, this is Jessica with the Army Wife Mini Life Podcast. Today is Vlogmas Day 9. I know I missed yesterday, however, I was on post by about 5 a.m. and we didn't get home until 1 a.m. this morning, so it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> but I am here with both Advent calendars and a bit of progress on my socks to talk about and a little bit about our holiday party along with fun German tradition for Christmas. So, let's get started. First off is our Christmas trivia, and that is, uh, people say that it's a German Christmas tradition, however it's really, they think it was originated in the States. If you ask most Germans, they'll be like, no, we don't do this, but it's still attributed as a German tradition for some reason. So that is the pickle ornament on a tree. In Germany, uh, you don't decorate your Christmas tree until Christmas Eve, and that's the first time the kids can see it. So if you hide your tree somewhere, you could potentially decorate it earlier, but kids don't see it until Christmas Eve, and they're surprised. And the purpose of the pickle ornament is it's hidden among all of the other ornaments on your tree, and whoever finds it first of the children gets a special gift from Santa as an extra one, as an extra gift versus the other children, or they'll get like a special dessert or a treat, a candy bar or something of that nature. So uh, it's a fun thing, it's a game, and um, we never did it in our family, but I do know others that have, and I actually purchased my nephew, purchased a pickle ornament for my nephew for Christmas this year. He's, as I said earlier, he's nine, and he is he's in love with all things anime. Well, not anime. He's into all things yokai watch and Pokemon. He's into video games for the most part. And so much so, actually, that he wants to work for Nintendo in Japan. So I'm pretty proud of him. He's so smart. Um, and he's a very adaptable kid, which is really hard. It's a hard life that he has with my brother-in-law and my sister. So uh, he's very resilient and I love him all the more for it. I actually spent four months last year uh, helping them out because their nanny had left. So I took over and I made sure he got to school on time every day and that I picked him up. He got his homework done and he was fed and he got into his drum lessons and everything. And even though it was stressful being away from my husband for so long because I had to go back to Kansas instead of being in, in South Carolina with the hubs. Um, it was very much worth it. So, and I got to see a lot of things firsthand that I normally don't get to even though my parents lived all of 15 minutes away from my sister. <laughs> so it was little day-to-day -day operations that were different and it was great because we got to this isn't a political podcast, so I'm going to keep it light and brief and short. Uh, we got to participate politically as a family, as a group. Uh, my dad is a of a differing party than the rest of us. So it's always, a, whenever elections come up, it can be stressful trying to blend and respect each other. But we make it work, and this time we got to have... Um, since I was there with my sister and her family, we had a blue party on election night where everything was blue. We dyed, we had potato cheese soup for dinner since it was freezing. And it's my mom's recipe and I actually dropped food coloring in so we had blue potato cheese soup. We had chocolate dip pretzels that were blue chocolate. We had blue M&Ms, we had blue Kool-Aid. Anything that we could turn blue or that was blue, we had. And we sat and we watched the election and we cried together when the, um, when the, announced, the results were announced. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So that's enough of the political, but that's how family works. And so he's going to get a pickle ornament this year. And I don't know why I went off on that tangent. I'm sorry, y'all. But I, my goal is to only have to record these once because otherwise it's really hard for me to remember what I did say and what I didn't say. So what you see is what comes out of my mouth and off the top of my head. I definitely don't re-record these vlogmases, 
So, um, anyways, I have been, since I was on post all day yesterday, I had told y'all I was going to bring two socks along with me, but I got a little nervous thinking I didn't have enough of an option. So I, d I caked up some more yarn and worked on them for a while. The first sock, this one hasn't had a lot of progress, but uh, because you've seen it before and it was at a point where I didn't want to count or have to pay attention. I want to be able to do this brainlessly and without having to look too much. So this is the Arkansas Yarn Company sock in the Christmas Ribbon Candy colorway. And all I did was add the heel. I killed some time at the Dunkin' Donuts in our PX food court because they have uh, free Wi-Fi. Because, I don't know if y'all know this, but Germany does not have the best uh, reception for when you're out and about. There's not and you have to use data and it's not like in the states where you get so much data included with your package and you get rollover. It's you pay for so much time on the phone and you pay for so much internet and when it's gone even though you can still use it that uses your high speed and you can still use regular data but it's really it's really slow like it takes 10 minutes for a page to load. And then when you're out in the country, like where we live, uh, there is no, there isn't 4G or even 3G. We have little E on our phones when we are in our house and the Wi-Fi is down. And Wi-Fi isn't always reliable here. There's a lot of times where it'll just stop working because the lines, uh, all the companies only use one line here. So... Uh, if it's down for you for the internet, it's down for everybody. So it can be really tough. And so it's not like the states where everything is easy and readily available, where if your Wi-Fi is down, you just can surf and use your data for a little bit. That doesn't happen here. If we were living on post, we could somewhat get by. But uh, out here, it's it doesn't happen. So as I said... Got the heel done. Got a lot of questions from people when I was in the Dunkin' Donuts. And actually a lot of them knew how to knit. And I was surprised because a lot of them are close to my age. And it's kind of an art that most people associate with older women. And so like 50s and above. I'm 25. The people that were working there maybe in their 30s and there was actually the manager is a man and he can knit and crochet and he can sew his grandmother taught him so uh, we had fun talking and they for the most part they can do like hats and scarves but they don't do shawls and socks so they were fascinated to watch me make my socks so that was the first one and the second one that I worked on was this Regia in the in a drive colorway line I don't remember the number, the color way numbers because Regio always goes with numbers. So, I mean, it's a decent way up there. Simple, bright, and summery. Those are both the socks that I'd shown y'all on the 7th. So, it's decent progress on that sock. The next sock I started, this is another Regia. And it's just the uh, Forfadig. So, and it's just this repeating over and over again, the teal with green speckled stripe and the red with pink per speckled stripe. So it again, made some decent progress since I cast it on two days ago. And then the final sock I've been working on is from Molly of a homespun house. This is her uh, home for the holidays color with sparkle. And it's got the gold Stellina in it, not the silver. So again, decent progress. I think if I would have just buckled down and stayed with one sock, I'd probably have one or two done and complete, but I wasn't in a spot where I wanted to do that. So this is what I have. And these all were kept in one bag, one big project bag, because it was easier than having to carry four separate project bags. So this is the bag they're in. 
And this is by my friend Angie of You Knitted Skeins. And uh, she does not have an Etsy shop yet, but she has been toying with the idea of it. She's someone that's actually part of my knit group here in Germany. And so she was talking, we were all at her house for an event one day and I saw this fabric and she's always told us that if we want to make a bag, want a bag made by her that she would be happy to do it. We just have to pick out fabric or give her fabric. And she knows that owls are my thing. So she showed me this with the Matryoshka doll, uh, nesting dolls for people that don't know. Matryoshka is a nesting doll and these are nesting owls. And it was just so perfect. Um, nice bottom, it's got a decent size wedge. And that is the inside fabric. Very sturdy, uh, the, the lining on the inside, it's like a batting almost, so it's a thicker padded kind of bag so you don't have to worry about your needles coming through when you have four projects in there like I do. So uh, that's all I have for projects going on. Our Christmas party that we went to last night uh, was in Netzeburg, so it's about a 30 minute drive from the house. It's about a 20 minute drive from my husband's work and it was at um, one of his NCO's houses. We had karaoke, there was lots of food, there was Filipina food, uh, which made my husband very happy because he is half Filipino. And so there's lumpia, which is my favorite. And I think it was pretty much devoured by the two of us. <laughs> and then um, we had a white elephant gift exchange. I had a Starbucks mug with some tea and uh, hot chocolate mix to give them as my white elephant gift. And in return, I came home with a corningware dish, a lid, and a thermal carry cover for traveling. So I was very excited to get that. We also did a bunch of minute to win it games. Um, we had one where you had to, uh, we had a bunch of German beer and these were played as couples and so my husband was drinking beer because I don't like beer. So uh, you had two straws in it. One was sticking out of the bottle and one was in the bottle, but you had to have both straw heads in your mouth and suck in whoever finished the beer first won. And there was a game for you had to sort M&Ms. There was getting marshmallows from one bowl to the other. And the game that we contributed was put a cookie on everyone's head and you had to, oh, on your face, so like up here on your forehead. And you had to use your muscles to get down to your mouth. That was a very popular one. People kept stealing and saying, oh, we dropped it, darn. So they had to get a new cookie. And I had made black bottom cupcakes as our dessert treat to bring. There was so much fun. It was a very much needed relaxation for the shop because they are in, December is always a very stressful time for anyone and for a lot of stores. But when you're in the army, December is half a month is gone because most of people are on leave either the last two weeks of December or the first two weeks of January. They split it up so that it's half and half and so there's always people working. So sometimes the people that you don't that you need aren't there for two weeks. So you have to try and figure out what you need and what could go possibly go wrong before it happens. And so when you're doing the travel and when you're doing the payment for that, it can get a little crazy. So they were all very stressed and they definitely needed the time to just relax and have fun. All the kids ended up with some new uh, books. Uh, There's a lot of chocolate for them and I think they got some form of toy. We don't have kids so I didn't pay too much attention. So there was only four there anyways and they opened all their gifts in a separate room because <laughs> they had a bunch of toys and there was a playroom in there. So it was kid friendly and adult friendly. And don't worry with the beers, we all made sure that there were DDs like me and so families that were living in the same area, like we have one of the people that works with my husband, he lives about five minutes down the road. So we made sure that they made it home safely because we drove them and some people just stayed at the host's house because they live close by anyways, so everyone was safe, no worries. Germany has very strict drinking and driving laws, 
So it's something that people are very, they make sure that they plan ahead of time. In fact, fun fact, nothing to do with the holidays at all. Um, if you're in any form of accident or you get a ticket, the pol the polizai here uh, can visit you up to six hours later afterwards uh, and they will come to your address. And if you are, if you had a beer after you got home to relax and because you're hyped up or stressed, uh, if they give you the test and there's alcohol in your system for up to six hours later, you can be charged as driving under the influence. <laughs> So Germany doesn't play with that. The alcohol here is much stronger and it's got a higher alcohol content versus in the States. And um, so like a beer here, a bottle of beer in the States, it could range between three to 6% alcohol. Here it starts at 12% and uh, they serve it by the liter. So you can get drunk really fast. Like when they, when you first get here, they recommend you have one beer for at dinner or whenever you're going to have it and then stop and see what your tolerance is because it's such a big jump. So, um, anyways, that's all there is to say about that. Let's go over here to our yarn advent calendar. Okay. First color. Again, I don't speak French. So just keep that in mind as I'm saying that this is Un Flambeau, un flambeau Jeanette Isabelle. So, um, and for those that don't know, that's the name of the song. Bring a torch, Jeanette Isabelle, bring a torch. And da, 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 da. I don't know all the words. It's such a rare Christmas carol to sing. I sang it in choir once a few years back, but it's been a long time since that happened. So this is the color. It's mostly like a lilac overtone and these purple pops of darker purple. So very pretty. All of the colors I've seen so far from Franco Filnitz have been pretty though. So I am loving it. That's the first one. And then this, I think this says Lord of Misrule. If someone knows what that says, please comment below. And let me know if I have it wrong. And then this is the colorway. All right, y'all. So today's is a bit longer than it normally is since I had two days worth of stuff. So I will see y'all tomorrow. And until then, do what makes your heart sing for me. That's two sticks and string. Bye.